I'm Veronica Bray, I'm a researcher here at the U of A and a targeting specialist also for the high-rise camera um, and my role with New Horizons is that I'm part of the geology and geophysics imaging team. So there's 22 of us sitting in a room waiting for the images to come down and just seeing what the surface of Pluto has on it. <laughs> New Horizons was the fastest ever launch. It's a very, very small satellite about the size of a grand piano and we put it on the biggest rocket we possibly could, so a lot of oomph and a very small weight. So New Horizons left Earth the fastest anything ever has, which is why it's only taken nine years to get to Pluto. So because Pluto is so far from the Sun, it's really cold out there. It's 40 Kelvin, which is almost minus 400 Fahrenheit. So ice is definitely there. Um, there could be rock as well mixed in with the ice. But at those really cold temperatures, other types of ices have frozen out. Um, so we expect to see methane ice um, incorporated on Pluto. And there's also uh, nitrogen ice that we see um, depositing from the atmosphere as frost and then as Pluto gets closer to the Sun during parts of its orbit the, the nitrogen frost will go back into the atmosphere and then back down again. I, I think one of the images that might be most interesting to the public is if we happen to image something that's active, so cryovolcanism, so a kind of ice volcano spewing something into the air or um, geysers like we see on Neptune's moon Triton. Um, because each scientist has their favourite surface process that they're looking for. I'm looking for impact craters. But to see something active, to prove that Pluto is this active body, um, would I think would be really exciting. So when I was five years old, uh, the Voyager spacecraft was just passing Uranus. So it sent back all of these images of this radically green gas planet with all of its different moons. And when I was six, my aunt asked me, as you do to a six-year-old, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I didn't know the name for a planetary scientist at the time, but I wanted to do something spacey with rocks, I think was my reply. And I might have even said, I want to work for NASA. And she patted me on the head and went, oh, of course you do, yeah, of course you'll do that. But on my sixth birthday, my mum, uh, my mum had one, one photograph left in the camera and wanted me to show her my favourite my, my favourite present from the whole day and it was my first guide to the universe. So by the age of six I think I knew I wanted to do what I wanted to do. With space missions the aim is to have them as light as possible so that you can spend less money getting them up out of Earth but they've made sure to put one ounce of Clyde Tombaugh's ashes on board. So Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto in 1930 and to have his ashes on board is, I think that's re a really nice touch. New Horizons completes our first look at the solar system, so we as human beings have been, well, we, we've sent satellites to every planet in the solar system, we've been to asteroids, comets, but we've never been to a Kuiper Belt object, we've never been as far out as Pluto while still imaging. So yeah, this is the last big thing that the human race gets to see in the solar system, so this is, yeah, really big. Yeah. <laughs>